the weekly recap, all that good jazz. But um, we have one interesting discussion segment here today. So I actually thought about this while I was moving. And uh, I don't know how I haven't talked about it on the channel here. Um, it's kind of surprising that I haven't, but during the move and like resetting all my setup and, and just kind of um, just kind of like getting used to things, right? I uh, I kind of always had an answer for this uh, topic, but just we just haven't really discussed it here on the show. So what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, for our discussion segment and and a little bit of tips and tricks and things like that is um does the quality of your setup matter um a very interesting question that i see a lot of people kind of uh either always have discourse over or they're like no i've made hits on a phone and no you know studio quality is always going to be better and things like that right so um this is going to be a very interesting topic. So, um, does the quality of your gear and your setup matter? Obviously, right? Like, at, in, in sort of like a broad perspective, of course it matters, right? Of course it matters. But when it comes down to where you're at as an artist, I think that matters more. So, for instance, um, you might be making music for like 10 years right you know you've been making music since like um you know maybe fucking 17 and now you're 27 right you might want to get uh some more higher quality gear rather than like some mid-tier gear just to be able to um um record at a higher quality right like i think i think it's really more about quality um of of, of the audio right and you kind of leave less for the engineer to clean up. Which, I mean, that's usually everybody's excuse is just like, oh, I'll just have the engineer clean it up. But if you're sending them, like, a more, um, like, a, like an easier recording to um, actually work with, they're not going to be as stressed, right? So that's the other thing there is, is, is like, it's less work for them and less compression and less kind of effects and, and, and a whole lot of processes just get cut out of the way. If you kind of uh if you kind of have higher quality gear but again does that mean you can't achieve a high quality song out of low quality gear um of course not of course not right because you still have all these people that have quite literally recorded on their phone in GarageBand and you know exported the files to their engineer and their engineer made it sound fucking insane right so engineers are really like a god send like when it comes down to like um things like that right like i think engineers really just fucking are, are are such a crucial part of of all kinds of music right like i i don't think they're a crutch i don't think you should use them as a crutch either i don't think that that's like something that you should always like lean on but they can definitely help you out when it comes down to like a lower quality audio recording right so um again back to the point i think it kind of matters ultimately um where you're at in your career like i said like if you've only been making music for 10 months and you've only put out like four songs you don't need um a three thousand dollar setup you don't need a ten thousand dollar computer you don't need a sure microphone you don't need two monitors right like you should be focusing on your craft because even if you have like a two hundred thousand fucking dollar studio setup right it's not going to change the fact that you're gonna have to get in there and work so you can't really like it's it's like the same people that love to buy like ads and shit all the time and and go crazy on certain things it's just like if if it was that easy to like buy into this this line of work and this kind of um career right um everybody would buy into it everybody would buy into it but it's not that easy right so it's not a matter of just buying a sure microphone and getting like you know studio booth set up and things like that like it's really not a matter of that it's a matter of where you're at in your career, you know? So if you're pumping out, you know, 30 songs a year and you're going crazy, you might want to invest in, you know, some more higher quality gear because not only can you learn from it, right? You can learn from like putting together your setup and using higher quality gear and things like that. But eventually all of your um, recordings will have, you know, naturally higher quality. 
right? And then your engineer can have more flexibility, things like that. Or even if you're on it, you're, you're your own engineer, you can still uh, get some of that flexibility as well. So um, I think that's the big thing there is you really got to look at where you're at in your career and it's just like, do I really need a higher tier sound? Or should I just be kind of working on my craft regardless of how I record? Right, because some people don't have access to an engineer. So if you don't have an engineer, you're kind of SOL. You know what I mean? So you either A, got to learn how to mix yourself, or B, find an engineer, straight up. Um, so you can at least have an outlet to constantly get songs in like a final, a final kind of area, right? So I think the other part of that too is just like, you don't want to like jump the gun, right? So for instance, you might want to switch styles or you might have a new recording set up like at your crib, right? It depends on where you record and things like that too. So there's a whole lot of other factors that kind of go into like the quality of your gear. I really don't think it's just like, oh, you just, you know, you spend $10,000 on a setup. It's got to sound flawless, right? Not really. Not really. Because if you're recording wrong, your engineer is fucking shit up, you're, you're, you know, exporting wrong, you're doing whatever. There's plenty of room for error regardless of you know how crazy your setup is right so i think that's like a really like important part about it is like again look at where you're at in your career and look at where you're at in, in your musical journey and you can kind of answer that question yourself right whether you can justify spending you know three four grand on a setup you know what i mean like that's the other part of it is is you gotta like really look at where you're at you know so um Kind of an important angle there. Um, so to really put a cap on it and really like answer the question, um, does the quality of your setup matter? Of course. But I think what matters more is where you're at in your career and whether you can really justify it and really need it. You know what I mean? It's 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 kind of like um, anything else in life. You know, you start a hobby, you start pretty much anything. You don't want to jump the gun and get the best of the best because you're not even that good at it yet. You know, it's like, oh, I want to start writing and painting and you don't go and buy, you know, a $5,000 bookshelf to, you know, write, you know, a novel next to if you don't even really know if you're going to uh, really enjoy writing. And that's the other part of it is, is like you really got to, again, look within yourself and kind of look where you're at when it comes to um, what you want out of a studio and things like that. Because it's because, like I said, like it's very much possible to create a song with the bare minimum setup and kind of have it be very crisp. But then you're going to have that like professional studio quality from people with um, insane setups, right? Like actual like home built studios and booths and things like that. So there's always going to be like a jump in quality. But again, I just think not everybody's ready for it. And I don't think that higher quality gear is really the answer to everything um, as much people would lead you to believe. Right. Um, you know, because there are like audio nerds and shit like that, and which is fine. Like the whole audio community is 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 a very special one because they actually are very passionate. But when it comes to like being a musician, not all artists are like audio um, audio aficionados, right? And like I think you should be to some degree, right? But I don't think it's like ultimately necessary on the kind of music and art that you create. So you know. Again, I think ultimately you got to look at where you're at and what you want out of music. Definitely don't listen to anybody that's trying to tell you that. You know what I mean? Because the answer is just not buying new equipment. You know, the answer is really like practicing and, and, and making the most out of what you have. And then when you're ready to progress, you'll you'll know. You know what I mean? Like you'll absolutely know and you'll be like, yo, I really want to do this with my vocals or I want to do this with beats or I want to do, you know, blah, 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 blah. I think there's a point where you're going to know. You know what I mean? So just look at where you're at and be like, okay, like, can I rock with that? Am I going to get a lot of use out of it kind of thing? Um, so very, very important topic there. And um, definitely let us know what you think, man. Uh, this will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. Drop a like, drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe. We're on the road to 280 subscribers on the main channel. Uh, we upload two times a week, every Thursday, every Saturday. Uh, underground tips and tricks videos just like this and a whole lot of other goodies over there, man. So go show the channel and these are some love, baby. Let's get it.